Good morning, welcome. I'm Shannon Jones uh, with Keller Williams Realty, and we're here today uh, for our Spring Home Buyers Summit. So, welcome. Uh, we have a few people who weren't able to join us live. Apparently, the flu is going around, and um, but we're going to be live today. And we'll also be recording this. So for those who couldn't join us, we do have a few people who submitted questions. So Dana will be um, popping in with some questions. And if you guys have any questions, um, please uh, go ahead and feel free to ask along the way and we're happy to answer them. So um, our team has actually been working in the Long Beach area since 1998 when I first got my license. And I got into real estate after actually having a terrible experience buying my first home. And it was scary to get started. I didn't know what to do. And so my husband said, hey, we should buy a home. And so one uh, Saturday we went out looking and um, started looking at homes that were way above our price range. And then once we figured out what we could afford, um, what we were looking at was sort of disappointing. And so that sort of backwards is to start looking at the homes and then talk to a lender. So we'll be going over what the process actually looks like. Um, once I actually got into escrow, it was a terrible experience. Nobody explained anything to us. And so we didn't know what to expect. And so one of my goals as a real estate agent is to make sure that other people don't have to go through that same experience. And so one of the things that we're very passionate about on our team is education and um, really helping people understand the process and what they need to do to be successful. So let me go ahead and introduce um, who we'll have um, speaking today. We've got Jessica Coyle, who is a buyer specialist on our team. She'll be speaking with you next. And then Brad Jones, my husband and business partner. And he'll be going over a little bit of um, what's going on in the market and how does that impact you as a home buyer. Um, and then we've got Alex Skur with NAL Financial, and he'll be talking about the loan process, what you need to do to get started, what different options there are, and down payment assistance programs. So without further ado, Jessica Coyle. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Uh -huh. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming and joining us. This is a super exciting time if you're thinking about buying a home. So I, that's what I love both, most about my job is uh, being able to share this experience with you. Um, just kind of going over the process pretty briefly. Um, first thing, like Shannon said, is that you kind of want to know what your buying power is, and that comes with sitting with a um, mortgage lender, and Alex will be filling you in a little bit more about that. You also want to get paired up with a really good real estate agent, and our team, like Shannon said, has been selling real estate in Long Beach area for over 20 years, so um, we kind of know what, a thing or two about what we're doing here. Um, but it's really good to sit down with an agent and kind of go over what you are looking for. Um, you can talk about the size of the home, the areas, um, you know, if you need a fireplace or if you have four dogs and you need a big backyard. All that fun stuff, you get to sit down with someone like me and we can go over everything and, and discuss sort of different areas, parts of town, wherever we can um, find a nice home for you guys. Um, then after that is um, going around and actually touring the homes. So that's always a fun time. We get to go in and explore. Do we like this kind of home? Do we like this different style home? Do we want the backyard? Maybe we will only want a patio, all that good stuff. And we get to go do all the touring and um, have a good time and explore. And then once we find a home that we do like, that's when we get to write the offer. So we sit down, we talk about how we want to set up our offer and we'll get into that, I, you know, as we cross that bridge kind of thing, but um, there's a lot of different ways to structure the offer. And once we submit our offer, that's when we're hoping that we get accepted. And a couple different things can happen at that point, one of which is that our offer gets accepted, 
and sometimes the seller has to counter back. Sometimes there's multiple offers on the home, and so we're in sort of a bit of a competition. And so the seller then will issue a multiple counter and we'll work our way through that and hopefully get our offer accepted. Once we are accepted, then um, our due diligence period starts and we have um, a certain amount of time to actually go and make sure the house, um, you know, has a good solid roof and foundation and have our home inspector come out. We'll also have the loan in the background doing their stuff that Alex will talk about. And um, we'll have an appraiser come out and make sure that the value is there in the home. And once we're okay with all those <laughs> things, then uh, we, what's called remove our contingencies and we sort of cruise into closing of escrow. And when escrow closes, that's the best part. We get to hand over the keys and you are a homeowner. So it's um, a pretty simple process. Uh, I mean, there's a lot going on, but it's uh, a good, good time for all of us. We'll be right there with you through the whole um, timeline. And any questions, you guys? Yeah. Um, oh, how long does the home buyer process take? Well, um, that's a good question, and it actually sort of depends. Escrow is actually about 30 to 45 days. That's sort of a normal time period. But if it takes us a little bit longer to find a home, then you know we're going to go on your timeline. Some people need to be into a home as soon as possible. And some people sort of are taking their time, and so it could be anywhere between like that 30 and 45 days to you know as long as you need to find the right one. Hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> Any other questions, you guys? Uh, we had a question uh, that someone had submitted online, and they said. How many homes do buyers usually look at um, before they buy one? Well, again, another good question. It totally depends. Um, and I think that um, if we have our initial consultations set up right, then typically there will be about maybe four to five homes. Sometimes, so like I said, during the um, home touring process, you kind of start realizing that maybe what you thought you wanted isn't actually what you do want, and so then it can be a little bit you know, more homes as we're sort of uncovering what you're looking for. But we like to do about four to five homes and then get you in and move on. <laughs> Sound good? Okay. Okay, well, I will bring Brad on. He'll give us a market update so we know what's going on out there. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, see you guys around. <clears throat> well, thank you, everybody, um, for coming in. Um, the market, it's, uh, there's a lot of statistics. I've got some information um, that I could go through. But I'm not going to focus on specific numbers right now um, because that can be kind of overwhelming. Um, we get a lot of questions on how's the market? Um, what's the market doing right now? And overall, the market is still strong. It's still an appreciating market, but um, the rate of appreciation is slowing down. Over the last few years, um, prices were increasing depending on what neighborhood or city you were in, uh, maybe six, eight, ten percent or more year over year, and that's a lot. Um, we're expecting over the next couple of years that that rate of appreciation will slow down a little bit, maybe more toward near its historical average of about three percent per year. So it's good for sellers and that the, the prices are still going up, but it's an excellent time for buyers as well um, because not only are interest rates low, and Alex will touch on that, um, but the appreciation is uh, slowing down. So prices aren't going up as fast. You still have an opportunity to get into an affordable home that meets your needs. Um, so the other thing that's happening in the market is um, inventory is going to start to increase a little bit. So as sellers are putting their home on the market, as the rate of appreciation is slowing down, um, as prices have gone up, we're getting a little more inventory on the market. Uh, what that means for buyers is that there might be a few more homes to choose from, and hopefully it might not be quite as competitive. As Jessica mentioned, um, we still do get into multiple offer situations, so homes that when you go out and you see them and they're priced right and they show well and they're easy to show, um, if you like it, it might be that somebody else does too. So it can still be competitive, um, but might not be as the same number of buyers that are looking for homes. Um, so that's great. That's great for buyers. Uh, the, the mortgage rates are, are lower, so good time to be in the market. Um, 
and um, I think our inventory has increased um, a little bit. Uh, I don't have the exact number here, but um, um, depending on what area you're in. So LA and Orange County, um, probably the average time on market for a house right now has increased a few days, so maybe up in the 25 to 30 day range, depending on neighborhood. Um, again, I could go through all the numbers with you. Do we have any questions? Um, I think, think we might have had one that was online. Did we have one? From yes. yes. Submitted one uh, there's right here from Michelle Long Beach. Um, she wants to know, should I wait another year before buying a house until I have more money? And so should, I think it's more like a timing question. Like Sure. And we get that question quite a bit because people um, a lot of times have the impression they need to have a larger down payment um, than they actually do need uh, to get into a home. But even with price appreciation slowing down a little bit, it's hard for most people to save money um, and keep up with the market. So if, if they're saving money and the market's continuing to appreciate, uh, they might not be in that much better a position uh, waiting. So a lot of times it's better to get in, start building your equity now, um, especially with, with the appreciation slowing down a little bit, now's a great time. So, you know, it depends on your personal circumstances. If there's a big event in your financial future that you might have a lot more money to put down, then sure, maybe it would pay it away. But in most cases, getting in sooner rather than later is a, is a great idea. Great, thank you. Okay. Julia, really any, any other questions on the market at all? No? All right, well, well, we'll jump in. Alex will talk a little bit about mortgages and interest rates and what it takes to get approved. Thank you, Brad. That was great. Hi, everyone. Hello. Alex Scher, NAL Financial. Uh, who are we? We are a mortgage broker that has been operating since 2003. A mortgage broker is a little bit different than walking into like a brick and mortar style bank. <clears throat> we are more like a, like a kayak.com of mortgages, essentially where you come to me and I'm able to take a look at your financial situation and then pick a program that works for you. Also able to shop the interest rate around versus just having one bank's programs, I have 20 or 30. So we, we have a much more diverse portfolio of products and that's why I like and prefer that model of a, of a broker. We're based here out of Long Beach as well as Newport Beach and um, we work with a lot of first-time home buyers. We work with a lot of people buying their second, third homes. A lot of investors as well. Very, very diverse. So, uh, again, the the process really starts when you have that interest and that motivation to go out and buy a house. And that's my goal today, is to let you know that the your capabilities are probably better than what you think. Right? There's there's a lot of programs today. Interest rates are really low. Uh, there's a lot of programs that help you get into a home with lower down payment or with lower credit scores than, than you think you, you need or um, a little bit less income than you think you need. Banks are a little bit less busy now as we've gotten out of the, the real you know, increasing market of 2014, 15, 16. So they got to come up with more ways to get people into homes, more ways to stay busy. The way they do that is they they make guidelines a little bit less strict. They make programs a little bit more diverse for, for many clients. So um, today we're seeing interest rates, I would say somewhere in the low 4% range. Even for government loans like the VA loan or the FHA loan, we're down under 4%, which is, uh, you know, that's, that's close to our historical lows. There's only been a few times in the last six or seven years where rates have been that low. One thing that, that's done over the last six to eight months is it's increased people's purchasing power, which is, for example, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, a deal right now for a client with another agent here at Keller Williams that two months ago could only afford 475. But because interest rates have gone down a quarter to half a percent since that time, I'm able to get them into a house around $500,000 with the same payment, right? So please keep that in mind and understand that as rates go lower, your buying power increases. Your payment still stays the same because your, your interest rate is lower. So it, it's something definitely to take a look at and, and consider here in the short term when we have such low rates that right now is a great time to buy. 
One reason I really like working with the Shannon Jones team is that they are so detailed and, and so good at getting your offer accepted. And when we can work together, it, it really makes our package look awesome and the sellers and the seller's agent are really impressed and know that we're gonna close the deal. So please use that as some motivation. Right now is a great time to, to think about buying. Your, your ability to get a loan is essentially based on three things. Your income, your credit, and the down payment that you have, okay? Right now, income-wise, we can use you, we could use your spouse, we can combine the two of them, we can sometimes bring in a parent, uh, a sister and a brother to help maximize the amount of income that you have. But basically, the banks like to see your debt, including the new house payment, included with the taxes and the insurance, be about 45, maybe 50% at most of what your income is per month. So you can borrow quite a bit of money, is, is really what that means. And again, we can help and bring other people in on, on that structure to help build the spread between what you have in debt versus what you have in income. So definitely keep that in mind. The next, uh, the next component is your credit. And, and credit is something that is, you know, people are really sensitive about. There's a lot of questions always on credit. Um, one of the myths, I think that the most important myth in credit is when you go and you're going to get pre-approved, you can take a look at a couple different options. You can take a look at a couple different banks. I encourage most of my clients to do that so that they, when they come back to me and they realize I have the lowest interest rate, they, they feel confident in that. And they've talked to a couple other places. If your credit was run one or two or three times in that 30-day stretch, when you went and looked at other options, it only counts as one time. So don't feel alarmed if you think, oh, my credit score is getting run 10 times. I'm super nervous that my score is gonna go down 50, 50 points. It doesn't happen, okay? So I, I've done this for 10 years, and I, I, I don't see that happen. Really, the only time that your credit would go down because of the amount of inquiries is when you go and get a mortgage and a car and 10 credit cards and you potentially had some sort of credit event in the past that would show negatively on your credit. So shop your rate around. Be confident that you know that you're getting the, the best interest rate, okay? Uh, credit score minimums, we like to see somewhere around the 580 range. That, that's where we're doing loans. But I, ideally, you're somewhere in the mid sixes as well. It, it's depending on what program that, that you want, how much down payment you have access to really determines the, the, the credit that you're going to need. But 580 is a score that we're working with day in and day out. A lot of those um, down payment assistance programs like to see you somewhere in the 640 range. And, and one thing that uh, I subscribe to and, and can offer clients is we, we work with a company that works on credit repair. So if you've had some past where you didn't make some payments and maybe it's been seven or, or eight years, this credit repair company is able to go in and try to get that off your credit, which significantly helps your score go up. So keep that in mind. If, if credit repair is something that you want to uh, address, we're here to help. Um, the last part about a home purchase, or the last component I think in getting a loan, in, in my opinion here, is the down payment. And the more down payment you have, is great, but you don't need any down payment today to get a home. Believe it or not, uh, we have programs through the state of California that offer down payment assistance. One's through the Cal HFA, another program called the Platinum Program, which is a program for firefighters, nurses, public service employees that offers a grant for your down payment that you don't even have to pay back. So there, there's a plethora of programs that are able to help you get into a home, and I want to encourage you guys to give us a call and get some information on them because it, it really is it's a benefit to get you into the house as Brad was saying and build that equity so that you kind of start you, you start your steps you start that savings account so that the next time when you go and you're looking at, at your second house you have that savings account from that first house you've built that equity there's a lot of there's a few tax advantages to owning a home as well and that gets you in that starts taking advantage of those tax advantages. So down payment is a, is a big component. We don't need any of it. It's nice to have. We can also get it from a parent. We can get it from an aunt and uncle. You can go and borrow from your 401k if you have one of those. That, that's something that I see and I recommend people do. You just pay yourself back through your pay stubs. So um, definitely 
many, many ways for us to structure the loan, many, many ways for us to figure out what, what's best for you. The, the one piece of homework that I always encourage people to do at the beginning of my pre-approval process is establish a comfort level of payment and then I can build a program that gets you there. So look through your bank statements for the last six months and say, if I had $3,000 a month coming out of it, am I okay? Am I still living the lifestyle that I want to live? And then I can come back and tell you, hey, that equates to a $500,000 home or a $400,000 home, right? And, and that is what I think is super important for you to establish your comfort level before we even meet. Once we do meet, we'll go through, I take a look at tax returns and pay stubs and, and your financials, I take a look at your down payment uh, potential, and we set up a pre-approval. Once we set up the pre-approval, that's where I deliver you off to Jessica. And that's where she starts taking you around. So, um, really, it, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. Right now is a great time to buy. As you heard in the beginning of this, interest rates are 4%, really, really low. And it, the, the purchasing power that you have right now is, is pretty high. So please give us a call. Let us know what kind of questions you have. I'm here to answer them. Uh, we're here day in and day out for you guys. And we look forward to working with you. Are there any questions? I have a question for you. Shoot. From start to finish, from the time somebody turns in all the information they, they need to turn into you to get a pre-approval, how long does it take to get a pre-approval back to them? It's, it's a great question. So what he, what he said was, how long does it take? If someone gives me all their financials, how quickly can I spit out a pre-approval and get them shopping with Jessica? There's been situations where I do it in a couple hours. If someone's very, very organized and very detailed and I have their tax returns and pay stubs and W-2s right in front of me, I can, I can do it really quickly. Um, that's my pre-approval. What I usually like to do is actually get the client pre-underwritten, pre fully pre-approved, and that's about a four to five day process. Okay. So anywhere, if, if we're quick and you like, to, you like a house on a Saturday and you give me a call on a Saturday and I can take a look at your financials, I can tell you right then and there that it's looking good. So, um, but generally speaking, it's about a week process. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions that we get a lot, Alex, and I think someone had actually submitted this who wasn't able to come, was, um, I have terrible credit. My, no, I don't personally, but many people <laughs> do. <laughs> uh, and so if your credit isn't at that 580, let's say that you've had some, um, you know, unfortunate circumstances in sure. the past and maybe had a bankruptcy or a short sale, um, or just got behind on your bills. Maybe there was a, a medical problem. Um, what's the process for um, improving the credit? Is that something you can help with or refer them to someone to help with? Definitely. Just from my experience in seeing different credit reports across the different clients that I work with, I, I have a de decent depth of knowledge of, of credit and, and what it takes to get it up. But I do have a, a repair company that I work with that has proven to be very successful in, in helping people in that situation either get derogatory things removed from their credit um, or helping them reach out to past creditors and, and realizing that there was some mistakes on it. So that would be usually what I do in that situation is refer them out to a, a credit repair company that I work with. Each loan has specific timelines from the, the date that one of those credit events happens to the date that you can process it. For instance, a foreclosure. You can do an FHA loan three years after you've had a foreclosure. You can do a conventional loan seven years after. Uh, a short sale as well, three years after. So a lot of the time, it, it's a potential, just a, a waiting game to get us back into the market. Uh, one of the best ways is to just go out and actually try to get another credit card and, and start proving to the bank, start proving to the creditors that you were able to take on a little risk and, and handle that risk and pay it off. The, the most and the quickest way to raise your credit score, believe it or not, is usually to decrease the balance versus the limit of your credit cards. That's, I've raised people score 50 points, 60 points by just decreasing the balance of their credit cards versus the limit. So the, the, the creditors just want to see that you have the ability to take risk and you're just not really taking all of that risk. Or you've taken it and you've paid it off. You've taken it again and you've paid it off. So that, that would be something that I would focus on. If you can go out and get another, uh, take a chance on a credit card, 
uh, and pay it down. And just use some gas, buy some gas on it, and then not use it again for a while. That's just going to show that you have some new good credit history. So, but takeaway is come talk to me, come talk to my credit repair specialist, and we'll get you on a game plan that, that works with your timeline as well. Thank you. Great question. Um, another credit related question. Um, I had someone recently uh, tell me that he was waiting to buy a home because his credit score was only 760 and he didn't want to buy until it was 800. Mm. Is there any benefit to having a credit score above 760 in terms of the rates that you'll pay? Another great question. It, it really depends on the loan amount. So if I've seen lo loan amounts under around seven, 720 grand, 740 and above is excellent. But when you start to get into the million dollar range or the million and a half dollar range, sometimes they incentivize you to have 760, 780, 800. But it's really minimal. And I, don't, I, I think the, the increase in the homes that you're going to see is not going to, the benefit that you would receive from that little bit of incremental in, uh, decrease in your rate from a higher credit score isn't going to offset the increase that you're potentially going to see in the homes that you're after. So. I wouldn't recommend that person to wait in that instance, but there is very, very incremental potential increase in uh, or decrease in your rate in like a million, two million dollar loan space with an 800 credit score versus 760. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one question I get a lot is um, people want to know how long the pre approval lasts then. Wonderful. So, a, a couple answers. Usually I tell my clients that that pre-approval is good for as long as you have your job and you keep paying your bills on time. But through that process, as Jessica is taking you around to look at houses, I'm going to continually get updates with your pay stubs, continually get updates with um, your, your bank statements to make sure that we're still sitting pretty. But usually somewhere between 90 days, 60 to 90 days, if I haven't heard from you and you just kind of took a little break and, and you came back, I'd love to, to revisit it. But Generally speaking, I'm going to keep in touch with you every every you know week or two and just say, hey, how you doing? This is what we're good at. This is where we're staying. Rates have gone down a quarter percent, so we actually can buy more. Or rates have gone up a quarter percent. We're we're sitting here in, in this price point. Um, but usually, if you keep your job and you pay your bills on time, that 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 pre-approval is good. I'm not taking you to your max, max, max right at the beginning of it. You know, so we have a little bit of a wiggle room there. Oh. Yeah. Great question. Is that you? Good. Um, Any other questions? That is all I have. We have some flyers. We have some uh, information on timelines and, and on those those low down payment uh, programs. So please reach out to us. Let us know. There, there's a plethora of, of opportunity right now for you guys, and we would be really happy and love to help you. Thank you. Okay, so um, if anybody has any other questions, we're happy to um, talk with you individually uh, afterwards. And if you um, feel also feel free to email us, and uh, you can just send a, a direct message to our team if you're watching belatedly on Facebook Live, and um, we've had some direct messages uh, that have come in during our, um, our live broadcast, if you will. Um, so again, everyone, thank you so much. We're happy to help. The home buying process, if you break it down into chunks, is super, super simple. The first step is just to get started. So contact us if you're on the fence and wondering, can I do it? Is now the time to do it? Um, it just starts with a phone call or a message. We're happy to sit down with you and analyze what your needs are, what you're looking for, where do you want it to be? When is the time that you want it? It's great at helping people evaluate what are the different loan programs um, and which one is the right fit. And um, Jessica can, or Brad, or we're happy to show you the homes and um, after we've analyzed with you what your needs are. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, we look forward to helping you find a home.